All right, welcome everybody um, to the display of mugs and loving cups 2017. Uh, they, they did. They, I don't know if they asked me or I asked them. It was kind of a combination of last year of both to do it. So, and I, I being our 50th convention, I really was happy to be able to do it for them. Uh, my lovely wife Kathy's going to kind of help me with picking up some stuff and showing them. Um, first of all, everybody that brought and donated mugs, would you stand up, please, so they can thank the ones that did bring them and they can see. Thank you all for help bringing them because these are nearly not all mine. Um, we did have somebody else that was going to bring some. We'd have had about another twenty of them here if they. Had, but they were not able to come at the last minute. Otherwise, you'd have seen some that I've never seen. They had some, definitely some ones I'd never seen before. So, uh, to start off, I would like to thank my dad for getting me started at him with this one. I was in the hospital having knee surgery when I was 12 years old in Springfield, Illinois. The surgery was going a little longer than it was supposed to, so he's pacing the hallway. My mom kicked him out and told him to go do something. So when I woke up from the surgery and was back in my room, he gave me that one. That's the very first mug I ever had. Um, and that was the start of me collecting right there. And then as years passed, you know, every year I'd go to convention, and my other mentor was John Britt. As you all know, he loves mugs. Oh, I'm sorry, it's purple. It's a purple one, I'm sorry. It's a purple. That started, that started my collection right there um, with collecting the mugs. So that's what got me started with the collection. And like I said... From there, every time I went to a convention, ICGA, Hoga, whatever it was, I had to run to John Britt's room because I saved my money all year to buy a mug from him. So a lot of these of mine are, came from him, too. So, yeah. Thank you, Mom and Dad, on that one. All right, we're going to start out here with the loving cups. Definition of a loving cup is a loving cup is supposed to have two handles. I, well, the orange tree loving cup has definitely has two handles. Has an interior, ribbed interior, pe peacock tail, whatever you want to call it. Um, we have all the colors but peach opal and aqua opal. If I knew who had them, I would have called them and see if they could come and bring them, but I wasn't sure who had those two. Very nice little cups, the orange tree. Uh, we also the also other or the other loving cup I know of it was a Mary Ann. We weren't able to get one. I this, thought I'd put them in the pump, but evidently I probably I didn't. It, but the Mary Ann, the loving cup is the one with the three handles, not the one with the two handles. The one with two handles is called the vase. The one with three handles is called the loving cup. So that's the other one I know of that we we've, we've got now. They're all very pretty. You can see the intricate orange tree detail on them with the handles. And now, with the mugs, we're going to start with Adam's rib. And this Adam's rib was, according to Carl Burns in his 1999 book, was introduced in 1925. Bridging the gap, he said, between carnival and stretch glass. The, the course of patterns characterized by the thin red vertical ribs extending up from the square, squat pedestal base. This is a thin plain band around the top of the piece, and they have them in according to the green or ice cream color, whatever you want to call. As far as we know, that is the only color that it's made in. And, oh, it was also made in Celeste Boo, and they were supposed to be a part of a lemonade set, so there is a picture with that. So that's that one. We're going to go next to the next one beside it, which is what made by Northwood is the Barbella 608. 
Uh, I was informed by the owner of this mug, there's only two of them, one damaged and this one. It also is part, comes with a pitcher uh, as part of probably a lemonade set or something like that. Uh, he found it in, on the West Coast and was able to buy that. And that's the only color that it comes in, correct, Russell? So that's the only color it comes in. I was surprised when I said I couldn't wait to see it because I'd never seen one. So it's really pretty. All right, the next set of mugs we're going to talk about, we're going to skip these right now, is the beaded shell, the one that Kathy held up earlier. The beaded shell, of course, has the beaded shell around it. It's made by Dugan. It comes in a lot, most of the colors it comes in right here, blue, marigold, white. As you can see, different shades of colors, blue or marigold, whatever, a black amethyst, Kathy, would you get the black amethyst? This black amethyst one is mine. Uh, I am going to tell a few stories of some of the mugs I own. This one, kind of important. Um, after I met Kathy, we hadn't even been married yet. And at Christmas that year, she found that in a local shop in Springfield, Illinois. Couldn't bought it for me. And she said it was black. After she gave it to me for Christmas that year, she said it was black amethyst. I'm like, oh, no, there's no black amethyst beaded shell. Well, it's black amethyst. I took it that year to ICGA to show John Britton. He goes, I've never seen one. Black, I mean, you can't see through it. Kathy just showed you cannot see through that mug. So she was kind of proud that <laughs> she found that mug for me. So that's the black amethyst one. Now, there are, I put some advertising ones here. There are two beaded shell souvenir ones up here. Uh, either I can tell you one's mine and one's not, and neither one of them are re very readable, but they are souvenirs. <laughs> that one just says souvenir. <laughs> Doesn't know what else is souvenir of, because it's kind of worst off. It looks like this one has two. So you can read the souvenir and something along with the side of it. All right, well now we're going to go back to a really kind of little cool little mug, the Booker, the Booker mug. This this the this mug was purchased at a local antique shop by Carl and Eunice on June twenty third, nineteen eighty three. It is marigold with the light amethyst handle and enamel design on it. Uh, they searched the books for it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. Uh, Bill Edwards saw the mug and photographed it for one of his books. He said they said he kept asking them to name the pattern, which they declined to do. And lo and behold, when the book came out, he had named it after Carl and Eunice Booker. So now it is called the Booker Mug. It does come. There has been what one full set found? Yeah, one full set with a pitcher. So it was. We, they call it the cider mug. So, I mean, maybe it could have been used for tea, lemonade, I don't know, too. But it definitely looks more like a mug that could have been used for the cider. The picture is a full-size picture. The picture is a full-size picture. Okay. Okay. So, that one's kind of neat. and I have seen it before, but I didn't realize it had the amethyst handle until they unpacked it yesterday. So, okay. Okay. Now, we're going to go, we're not in alphabetical order here. We're going to go down here and talk about a couple of shaving mugs from Fenton, the 630 mold stretch glass that uh, Russell and Kitty brought for us. They're stretch glass mugs. As far as we know, and this is from coming from, from Mr. Russell over there, the Fenton was the only company to make these true, true shaving mugs. With the, he brought the soap to put in the bottom of them. They were, of course, used for shaving mugs with the old type of shaving brush and the soap in the bottom. They have the three prongs. I've never seen any with the three prongs that were in the bottom of it that they used to actually set the soap on. And the nope, the dogs would try to keep the soap from melting and getting mushy. And, of course, the men would use the brush to do their face. A lot of the old mugs and glass china also have had black marks in them from from being used by them. Now, Russell told me these are the only colors known and the only two known, right? 
Okay. Okay. But these are the only two colors now, uh, Celeste Blue and Top, not Topaz. What did you say? Topaz? Okay. That's what I thought you told me. Topaz. So those are kind of all neat. I was waiting to see what they look like. They're kind of neat. I'm going to start looking for those. I want a pair. So. <laughs> all right. We're going to go back down here. I know. We're alpha, out of alphabetical order. So. All right. We're going to talk. This is a little concave mini that was brought. Kind of a little neat little mug. Marigold. I don't think there's any other colors, are there? No, okay. Yeah, you don't know. Either. I didn't, couldn't find them when I was looking them up. Okay, we're going to go to the Bo Peep by Westmoreland. This looks probably made as a child set mug. It's got a little lamb on one side, and it's got, uh, what's on the other side of it? Oh, Bo Peep, that's right. And it says Bo Peep. Neat little mug. It's made as, it was made, I believe, probably as a child for the children to use when they were little. So that's part of it. Now, we are going to go to the Colonial and the Chesterfield. And I'm going to try to explain. I got lost here. Hang on. Oh, here we go. Chesterfield was made by Imperial, and the Chesterfield is this one with the ribs on it, a round base, and uh, they come in marigold, celeste blue, white. Uh, we have also a, what we'd call a pastel marigold. Now the difference, Kathy, hold up the other one. The difference, this is the Chesterfield, this is the Colonial, is the Colonial, the top of the handle on the Chesterfield flat, this one's not, Show the base. The base is an octagon base, as you can see. Uh, both the, uh, the marigold ones in the colonial are mine. One has a clear base, and that one is marigold all the way down, which I thought was really neat, because all of them I'd seen up until then had clear bases. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Kathy. Now, we're going to move down to the dandelion. Dandelions were made by Northwood. Uh, they basically come in, I think we have all the colors here, aqua, opal, marigold, blue, purple, and green. As you can see, I don't know if anybody noticed the three aqua opals. They're all different shades of opal. That's why I had them bring so many. They were all different. They all look different. And I'm sure there's probably two or three more different types of aqua opal out there that don't even look like these three. I've seen a lot of different, uh, different ones on those. Now, what I, what's unique about the dandelion? Does it look like a dandelion on there? I don't think it does, but neither does the picture. <laughs> so, but that's what they call them, which is fine. Although this looks more like the dandelion than the, than the water sets do. And that, of course, an outstanding blue one. All right, now they also made what we call Knights Templar. And they made them in marigold, ice green, and ice blue. And they were made for the Knights Templar Convention in Pittsburgh. On for, and it says on the bottom, May 27th, 28th, 29th, 1912. Um, and they all say that, so they must have made them for that convention for them. Why? We're not sure. I couldn't find out exactly why with the Knights Templar emblem. And if you look at it, they did it with a raise in the bottom. To read it, you got to read it from this way, not this way. <laughs> That's kind of unique about it, how they stamped it that way. Why they didn't make these in ice blue and ice green, I wish they would have, because I'd love to have them. But that's what you call the Knights Templar, and that's the difference. They are definitely a little more scarce, a little more rare than what these are. Estate. Where's the estate? Estate's behind you. Estate mug. The estate was originally called filigree, but it was actually done by Westmoreland. Comes in marigolds, has pattern lines running randomly around the bottom of the piece. Uh, there are quite a few of these 
mugs around, but almost everyone I've ever seen has some type of, they got souvenir around them. This one's outstanding. It's not mine. It's outstanding marigold color. So they're not easily found, but they're out there, and a lot of them do have, have the souvenirs of something on them. Okay. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about these here across the bottom. This is Encore, this one. It has got an etching on it. It's a souvenir of Cedar Points. Ohio. Oh, Ohio. Yeah, almost said Cedar Point, Iowa. <laughs> Ohio. A little neat. A little neat. Uh, we have some other... It, here on the bottom, literally these little miniatures are kind of cute. Uh, one with an enamel. Uh, this one, I'll talk a little bit about another one of these here in a little bit. Little ones. You know what? I never thought about these when the owner brought brought this one and these with them. I never thought about that. I got those at home. I never even thought about it when I was doing this talk. Uh, they're packed up, but I do have them at home. Uh, they were given to me by my mom or dad. Sometime during the years, I started collecting them, so they're kind of they're kind of neat. All right, we're going to go to the fishermen. Fishermen. It's made by Dugan. It only has a pattern on one side; the other side is blank. Uh, I think everybody that knows a little bit about this mug thought that Dugan made this with. The, to be able to put a label for candy or something on the back of it, where we think is why that was done. We do not want to get this mixed up with the heron. Grab one of the heron, hun. The heron made by Dugan also is the same way. It has a plain back, but the birds are, it has a bird on it, and this one has fishermen, so they are the same company. Go ahead and put that back down. Now, they, they come in black, black amethyst, blue, purple, marigold, peach opal. I do not own a peach opal one. Um, this one here, this one here I was second bidder on a couple of years ago at ICGA, but I didn't get it. But I'm glad the owner who got it did. <laughs> I've been second bidder two or three times, but when I buy one of these peach opal, it's going to be opal. I don't want one just a little bit. I want one that looks like that one, or actually we have two of them here, or the other one that has opal. Now, it also comes in blue. Very rare color. Blue is very rare. The only one I've ever seen in blue, John Britt had one year at a convention that I saw that he had just actually had just recently picked up. And then I had not really seen too many more, any other blues. Last week, uh, Connie O'Connor, I don't know if anybody knows her on Facebook, she posts a picture of a blue fisherman's that she owned. I about died. And it was really pretty. You could see through it, everything. So I text, I messaged her back, you sure you're not coming to ICJ? I don't have that mug. And I said, if you ever want to sell it, you know where to go. Because <laughs> it was really, really pretty. Now, there's another one here. This one. Yeah. This one, I own. I bought it at ICJ a couple years ago. I bought it as purple. It's not purple. Uh, I don't know what color it is. Since I own it, I name it. I call it root beer. I don't know. If it's root beer, it's not whorehound. It's not enough gray in it to be called whorehound. Somebody told me yes the other day when I was unpacking it, put it up, they thought maybe light amethyst, but I don't see any amethyst in it. I really don't. So, but anyway, I call that root beer, and I think that's kind of neat. That's a color I have not seen. This one here, this is a purple. And this is... Probably one of the prettiest purple fisherman mugs I have ever, ever, ever seen, Kathy. 
hold it out here so they can turn it around. Back, the back. Look at the iridescence on the back of it too. You talk about screaming purples and blues, pinks. That is gorgeous. So that's that one. Okay, now we're going to skip that. Go on to the heron mug that Kathy just had picked up. Like I said, the heron mug is almost the same as the fisherman's, made by Dugan, but it's got a heron burger on it instead of the fish. Um, these are only found basically in purple and marigold. Similar, it's also similar to the stork and rushes down here that you see on the end, except the bird faces along the other direction. Both made by Dugan, but so you know you don't want to get them. They are easy to get mixed up, but you just want to be kind of aware that they are different. Now, when I was doing research on this mug, I was reading an article an old article that was republished in an ICGA pump that John Britt wrote in 1974. He was talking about the Heron mug. And he said at the end of the article on the Heron, it would be a dream come true for me if I could find one in Marigold. So a Marigold one had not been found yet. Uh, very interesting in that. Well, some have been found, not many. We have one here. Uh, basically, Basically, the heron and marigold is really rare. This is the first one I've seen. I own it. I got lucky. My dad thought I was crazy when I told him I got it and what the price was I got it for. The only other one I've ever seen sold was in 1993 for $3,000. I didn't pay $3,000 for that. Very, very rare. It had been a really solid ride. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, I didn't pay that for it, and I was very lucky, and actually, we weren't there. It was a Jim Rota auction, and we were at a, actually at a cat show in Columbus, Ohio, right just in a half hour or so from Greenville. We tried to figure out how to get there, but we couldn't figure out how to get us there. I put a bid in on that. I put a bid in on the one Kathy's got in her hand, the green shaving orange tree mug, and three Dork and Rusher mugs. He had about 70 mugs in this auction. I really could have gotten in trouble, but I did one. Well, the bid I put in on this was just really a stupid bid. I wasn't going to get it. Monday morning, Lori called, told us what ones we got. She told me I got that, and I'm like, are you kidding? And she said, yeah. And she said, I got bad news for you. She said, Jim messed up your bid and bid $25 more for your green orange tree than what you put in. I didn't care at that time. I had that one too, which I took that one and it, as we'll talk about it here in a little bit, but yeah, it's really pretty and I was not upset with that. And then I took them down when I got them in the mail. I took them all down to my dad because he wanted to see them. He wanted to see this because he didn't believe I got it. Later on, I was told by somebody that, I don't know anybody out there, does anybody know Steve Morrow? You probably all know Steve Morrow. Steve Morrow collects mugs too. When Steve Morrow, when Steve Morrow found out what the price was that went for and who had it, he was mad. But I'll tell you a story that what he got me back with. So later on. But anyway, that's what that came from. Very, I'm so proud to have that mug. That's one of the proudest ones I have in here. Next, we're going to talk about the Hurt Man by McKee. Uh, it's got an inverted heart shape around the bottom, and apparently it was very popular as a souvenir um, as well. These two are not souvenirs, but there are some with souvenirs written on it. As you can see, the heart band around the top. This one's actually iridized. This one's kind of clear on the bottom. That's how you distinguish the heart band. Okay, that's it. Now we're going to go to near cut by Cambridge. It has an intricate geometric pattern around the bottom and found mostly found in marigold. And you, as you can see, every single one of these four have souvenir writing. The three I have at home that I didn't bring because I let other people have souvenir writing. So it must have only been made 
in souvenir writing, as far as I know. And by the way, whoever owns these three little marigolds, if you ever want to sell them, look me up. Those are absolutely <laughs> outstanding marigolds. So that's what that pattern is. Yes, it does. Pick that one up. This one. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't realize that till this morning. I was looking at it. I'm like, hmm, that might go in my pocket today. <laughs> I didn't realize that. That's cute. It says, it says, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. That's really neat. I did. I didn't notice that till today. All right, we're going to go to the Humpty Dumpty in the front. This is not really an old back in the 1910s and 12s, but it's still fairly old. With the Humpty Dumpty, it was made as a child set. It also, now I've never seen it in Carnival, but you see it in pink, the blue depression glass, I always call it, purple. We bought three complete sets for our nephews and great niece and nephews. It comes with a bowl and a plate along with the mug. Now I've never seen those in this. Has anybody else seen any marigold plates or anything? A lot of people might associate uh, another plate, but as far as I know, this marigold mug is the only one I I know in the Humpty Dumpty. I bought that one at a Mickey Rico auction. Carl and Eunice, Carl and Fern were sitting behind me. Kathy was with me, and I bought that. And Carl turned around and smacked me on the back of my head, and he goes, you know how what kind of deal you just got on that? And I'm like, I don't even know what it did. I mean, I knew what it was, but I didn't know what it was worth. I just thought it was pretty cool. So he and I talked about 10 minutes about it. He knew a lot about it. All right. All right, we're going to talk about the grape leaves. This is a cute little piece. It's a grape leaves pedestal, enameled, unknown maker, a little marigold. Uh, the owner that brought it, I thought it was really neat. When he sent it to me, I wasn't sure what he was talking about until he unpacked it. Really neat with the, with the etching, it's almost the etching of the grapes, grape leaf on it. That's really neat, really neat piece. Minnesota. Minnesota. This is what this pattern is called. We're going to step down here. I also had somebody send me, bring one that's called Web. When we were setting up yesterday, uh, they're exactly the same. I don't know which the pattern because the owner says this is Web, the owner this is Mess. So I'm not going to argue with them. I actually went upstairs yesterday for a while and tried to figure out. I didn't. So, as far as I know right now, they're going to say what they are. Web or Minnesota, you can call it, you own it, you get a name of it. So, now, the Minnesota, I know about the web. Carl, did you actually find it as a Minnesota, the pattern name for it? Okay. Okay. You did find it. Okay. Now, the one that has the web, who had the web? Who brought the web? Yeah. Now, you said that you did find that too as a web or not? Oh, I did. I did. <laughs> so, yeah. Same. Different shape, but they're both mugs, so... All right, we're going to skip over singing birds and orange trees for right now. We are going to go to the Stork in Russia, down here on the end. Stork in Russia. We talked about it before. The Dugan pattern. Uh, unlike the pictures, this only comes with a lattice band on the top and bottom. Uh, they come in multi, you know, purple, marigold, blue. Now this one is what? Okay. That's purple. Uh, they also come in aqua, powder blue, that one. Hold up the light. That was one of the others I got from the Jim Rota auction that, that day, was that one. And I also got this one, which is a very light lavender or 
amethyst, or not, I'm not saying amethyst, lavender type mug, and it's lavender all the way through. When I was doing my research, uh, you know, I hadn't looked them up for a while. They don't list either one of those colors. So we're going to have to call Mr. Doty and make one hooked on Carnival and make sure they put aqua and that color in. Because they do exist because they're here. And somebody else also brought, I believe, a lavender. Well, that's mine too. That's mine too. <laughs> I didn't realize I had two different two different colors. Okay. So yeah, they come in other colors than the blue. Blue's a rare color. I haven't seen a whole lot of blue stork and rushes. Uh, I like I said, I do have that one. It's really pretty. I got that. My dad bought that for me years and years and years ago. Turn around, Kathy. I'll let them see it. You haven't seen it, but it's really ugly on the other side. You won't walk out. Look. I mean, no air dances, no blue, but I've never found one to replace it. But, you know, I just display it this way because it's really pretty on this side. <laughs> so, but it's a rare color for that pattern, just like blue is for any Dugan. Okay, let's go to a robin. Robin. Made by Imperial. It's the only Imperial pattern with any type of animal or bird on it. It comes in marigold, powder blue, lavender, has been found, smoke. We do have a smoke. We have actually have a couple of them. Um, Oh, okay. I'm going to talk about this first. Marigold has a stipple background. I didn't know this, so I started packing mine. I wasn't bringing this one. This marigold does not have a stipple background. I knew they came like that, but I didn't know I had one. I have two marigolds, one with stipple and one with odd. So at first, people said the one that's not stippled was new. It's not. That's old. But why they did that, I have no idea. I right, pick up the smoke. All right, this is smoke. Yes, it is the one that came from Karen Engel three weeks ago. Thanks to my mother. My mother owns it. But um, she bought it. Someday it'll be mine. That is smoke. And unlike like the marigold, it does not have a stippling background on it. So, yeah, very pretty. It's kind of a special mug to me. A couple years ago, Karen was going to do the talk at Hoga. She called me one night to talk about that mug, and we ended up talking over an hour about that and, of course, other things, because she had no information on it, and she wanted to know from me about it. And I was looking forward to seeing it and that year and everything, and uh, I had a surgery that was postponed. Well, I ended up having back surgery the Monday before Hoga that year. Uh, didn't get out of the hospital till Wednesday that week. Of course, the doctor wasn't going to let me travel, so we had canceled the reservation. Karen Engel knew that because she knew I was going to look at that mug and talk to a little more about it. So my, that's why mom bought it. It came spe really special. Mom told me when that year when she got to Hoga, Karen met her at the door with a care package to send back to me with some stuff in it. A couple of bottles of wine she brought that year. The new Hoga field guide you guys had just put out was in that. And a couple other things. So that kind of really spread news. She knew it was kind of special to me. So... We have that. Vintage banded. Let's go down to vintage band. Marigold. Has a great pattern with a leaf. Banded diagonal stripes around the top and bottom. Found mostly in marigold. Well, I don't know, about a year, two years ago, I was um, on an online auction, Jim Seek. This one was on there. Nobody's bidding on it. It's aqua, bottom, not marigold. It actually has an aqua bottom around the bottom. I didn't buy it because it actually... That was another one my mom snuck in on me. I saw it, but I just forgot to bid on it, and she did. 
and it was given to me for Christmas that year. But it has an aqua bottom, so it's not truly marble. Okay. Three band. Three and a half inch mini. We have two of them here. Kind of a neat little thing. Both have souvenir. What did I say a souvenir on them? One is from Cincinnati, Ohio, and it looks like the other one is somewhere in Iowa, but I can't read it very well. Okay. <laughs> Dundee? Okay. So that's kind of neat. I've never seen that before. Okay. Panel Palm by U.S. Glass. When the person sent this to me, I didn't have much time to look it up because I didn't get to list the bugs till the Friday before the 4th of July. So I did look it up a little bit. Really neat. I've never seen it before. I don't know a whole much about it. It was made by, excuse me, it was made by U.S. Glass too. Lee, you have any more on it? I think you're the one that brought it. I, I looked it up and tried to find I couldn't even find it before we got here. So, Is it? You know, I, three or four of these up here, somebody told me that's where they end up finding them, and I just didn't look there for a while. All right. Twisted ribs. Unknown. Little tiny little thing. Kind of cute. Got a little twisted ribs that looks all the way around it. All right, we have one here, Ray's Thumbprints, a little mini souvenir, unknown, a little cute, got a little marigold top, clear bottom. A little neat little thing. I didn't, I never found it, so I couldn't really look through too much with it. Did you? No? Okay. So I'm not the only one that didn't find much on it. Now, I told you we were going to talk about another little one, like we were showing down there. This is the same thing, but it's got a little tiny shield in the bottom of it. You guys won't be able to see it, I don't think. Um, I told Kathy last night, I'm going to have to go home and look at all mine and see if I got a shield on the bottom. I never even noticed it. I got three or four of them at home. A little tiny shield in the bottom of it. Oh, federal? Okay. And this is the plain <laughs> But I have three or four in Marigold at home like that. They're packed up because I can't right now display all of mine. So I'm going to get them out when I get home this next week or next weekend and try to find see if mine have a shield in the bottom. All right. I skipped the orange tree and the singing bird for a reason, because there are so many of them. Orange tree is a well-known, very popular carnival glass pattern, whether it's mugs or bowls or whatever, made by Fenton. Seems like they made a bunch of mugs. Abundance of colors. Um, it comes definitely in different styles. Kathy, back up. They come in different styles. I'll show you right here. Right here on the bottom. I own flared out marigold, straight up marigold, and a turned in marigold. They're all mine. My dad actually found two of them and I found the turned in one. So they do come, if you're looking, they do also come the flares. As you can see, if, if you guys have been looking, the flares, some are really flared, some are not, just a little bit. They so. You know, that makes them unique and different for if you're collecting the easy pattern collectors, a ton of them. We have the larger size that comes in a three to three and one eighth inch base is shake called the shaving mug. Of 
Then we have the standard, which is two to two and a half inches. That's how you tell. It has nothing to do with the top of them. It's the base. So that's how you tell the difference on those. Okay? All right. There's the, there's the two sizes. The type 1. We do have two different. John Burt was the first one, I believe, to figure out that there's actually two molds. Uh, other people have noticed it and wrote on them, too. I'm going to take the article that John wrote on these. The orange tree... The one type bug has a band with the scales of a horn, like figures pointing on uh, running to the right, the standard size, regular one. Yeah, just put that one on. Mm -hmm. On the top, they all run the same direction, top and bottom. Okay, there's also one, and this is a bad example because the, the detail is not really good on the on the on the bottom, but on the top. The orange tree, the band, two-thirds of them go one direction, one-third goes the other direction. John Britt decided there must have been two different molds and maybe even two different ways they put it together. Because if you look at the one that goes, and if you guys don't know, it's the one you can look, there's seams in the mug. At the seams, it's where they go different. So did, was there two different ones? They put them together like that? Don didn't know. He's just going by what I wrote in his art. Why I read in his article uh, that maybe there was a way to do that with the mold on those. So he figured that one one part of the mold had the scales going one way, and the other part had the other one going the other way. All right. Now we're going to talk about another difference. And they're small or big, but I'm going to pick the, these are really got great detail to, to see. One has a large trunk tree. One has a small trunk tree. One of them, the large, the one with the large base, the limbs go farther up into the tree, into the oranges. The one with the skinny trunk, they don't go up as far into the tree. That's how you can tell the difference on those. I picked those two. They're both blue. And of course, most of the mugs that Kathy's picked up are mine. because. But these are both blue, different colors. Outstanding blues, by the way. And the other, the other thing about the orange tree, it's the only mug made in red. Any version of red. I have a lot of versions of red. Now, this one is an orange tree red. It was bought by my father as a mandarin orange, the large one. I don't know what mandarin is, but since it's mine now, he gave it to me, or I had my wife buy it from him for me for Christmas one year. That's what they call it. Okay, pick up. I got all different shades of red. I don't know if anybody's noticed when they've been looking. All these on the top shaving, they're all different shades of red. Is that brick red, straight red, mandarin orange. See, they're all different shades. And I'm sure there's other shades than what we have here. Now pick up. Now let's go down. Let's go down to these other reds. Pick up this one slag. This one is mine. It has a slag effect to it. It's red, but it has. It's called red slag because it has a slag effect on the base of it. Uh, it's hard, kind of hard to see unless you get up there. If anybody wants to see it afterwards, I'll be glad to show it to them. These are all red. Different shades of red. Amberina. Ooh. Beautiful Amberina. I think we have two of them, don't we? Yeah. 
Beautiful, both of them, beautiful brand, Amberina. Amberina, top red, bottom yellow. Reverse Amberina is the other way around. Okay, orange tree. We have many, many colors. Oh, I forgot to tell you, on the tables are a list of the mugs, the colors that we know, that I know of. Uh, I did not list, put colors in front of these, little tags. We thought about it, but what I'm calling one color, you guys may not call the same color. So, um, sorry, we'll go back to this one that Kathy was holding. Sorry, this one. That's mine. I call it teal. People are going to call it sapphire, whatever. It's mine. I call it teal. Actually, I bought it as teal. So, okay. Now, white. White's kind of rare. We do have two white ones here. There's one of them. They're almost, almost identical twin. I've never seen a white one that's got a whole lot of great iridescence and frosty, but they are iridized. Green is kind of a rare color. That's a green one. Yeah, hold off the shaving. Both outstanding green. Both of them. Both of those are outstanding. As you can see, this one has a small base. That one has a large base. All right, we're going to talk about one more entry before we go to the singing birds. I think everybody here that knows me and what it's going to be. Aqua Opal Orange Tree. Far as I know, and I've talked to a lot of people, far as I know, it's the only one that exists. Came out of the D. Beckmeyer collection at Hoga a few years back. I wasn't there. Christmas morning, Christmas Day, my mom usually tried, gives me a mug. My dad used to do this all the time. A lot of my mugs came from my mom and dad for Christmas. Well, my brother and my mom tried to pull a trick on me. They didn't wrap that. They put it in her cabinet. Thought I'd see it. I was there for almost five, six hours before we opened presents after lunch that day. I never saw it. I opened another couple mugs that she'd give me, little ones, nothing, anything like this. And all of a sudden, my brother pulls that out of the cabinet and hands it to me. I couldn't stop crying for 15 minutes. <laughs> My dad and I knew about it. We talked about it. We wanted to own it someday. I wish my dad was alive to see it, <laughs> but he's not. I'm very proud. Thanks, Mom. All right, let's go to see the birds before I really break down here. Singing birds. Let's go down here first, honey. Stippled, unstippled. We have some stippled ones here. They come in blue, marigold, green, purple, custard. The two that half are holding are the blue and purple. They both came out of the Barton Dooley's collection when ICGA sold it. Um, I wanted them so bad. I bought the blue one. I was so excited I got it. I didn't pay attention the purple was next. All of a sudden, she's hitting me and elbowing me on one side. My dad's elbowing me on the other. You're going to bid on this next one? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. So I ended up with both of them. Very pretty. I'm proud they came out of Barton's collection. Um, I've seen, at the time, the blue, both of them were really, really scarce. The blue one, not quite as much now. A lot of them are showing up. Uh, in 2008, I'd had knee surgery and hernia surgery at, within one week of each other. I was sitting around the house on eBay playing one day. Came across five of them. Somebody was selling five blue simple singing birds in Florida. So I called my dad to see if he'd seen it. And he said no, so he looked it up. He said, don't worry about it. I'll bid on them. I'll buy the five. I'll keep one. You keep one. If it's better than yours, we'll sell the other three and split the profit. Well, I didn't get them. Somebody sniped them at the last second and got all five of them. So that made that mug just a little more less valuable. Not a whole lot. There's still not a whole lot of them around. Purple. 
Very rare, not very many of them. A couple years ago, I had gone to an auction in Indiana. Carl and Eunice were there, the Tom Burns over at that mall. I went there to buy two mugs. They had a purple singing birds that I knew was better than that one, and a peach opal fisherman. I didn't get either one. The purple was, there was me and another person who I didn't know that was bidding on the purple. He didn't get it either. I ended up going to a phone bid for a lot of money, a lot more than I wanted to pay. Well, about a month later, I went to Hoga. Dorothy and Emmett were selling their collection. They had one. The prettiest one I've ever, ever, ever seen. Dorothy told me the story about talking to my dad about it when she found it and asked dad if it was rare and how much. Let me tell you, I think she was kind of happy that she got it. Well, the morning of the auction, or the preview on Friday, I was looking at it and Dorothy said, are you going to bid? And I said, yeah. And she's telling me about it. And she told me the story, how she got it, and talked to my dad and everything. And she asked me what I thought it would bring. And I said, well, I don't, she said, I don't know. I told her, I said, I think it'll bring pretty penny if there's somebody else that wants it. I did not end up with that one either. I ran it up to $800. I think it went for $850. She was so proud that it went for that. They weren't yet. She told her, you're right. And I said, well, I wasn't going to let it go cheap. <laughs> so, but it's still the prettiest one I have ever, ever, ever seen. Okay. <laughs> See. <laughs> no, that's fine. I, that, okay, singing bird, regular. Brian was talking about blue. Now, there were three very, very outstanding blue ones sitting up here. All different shades of blue. And I'll even hold the third one. Electric. Cobalt. All different shades. That's the thing about the orange tree and the singing birds if you collect them. Shade after shade after shade of every single color you could collect. Comes in ice blue and white, aqua opal. Lavender. This is mine. Whorehound. I can keep going on and on with shapes and color. Like I said, that's why I didn't put tags for colors. There are so many of them. Marigold, there's two outstanding marigolds here. Green, I got two shades of green. You can go on and on about them. The aqua opal, two aqua opals here. Different, once again, like the dandelion, they do come in different shades of aqua opal. Do what? Green? Ice green. No. If anybody finds an ice green one, please let me know. <laughs> I did get told by somebody, though, just yesterday, that they thought somebody had just sold them that they thought they had found a white nice ice templar dandelion. Now, Karen Ingalls auction, I about fainted when it was listed a blue nice ice templar. I was going crazy. My mom would say, I was going crazy. I thought, I got to find out if this is a Knight Templar or not. Well, as it was, it was a typo. So. Okay. All right. I've, oh, yeah. Kathy reminded me. This one here is the Amberina. It's not ear dyes. Last year after the convention up in Indiana, I got home, I got home and... About two weeks later, I got this in the mail, in a box. I opened it up. Not ear dive. Came from Lane Booker. He said, I thought you needed this one. I'm like, okay. I tried to do some research on it. You know, they made them in pink. It's green. I got the blue one that's painted flowers. Was this one? I never saw, found this one. Was it made and not ear dive as an amberina? I don't know, but I think it's really neat. They do look the same, don't they? I don't know. I just brought it just because I thought it was neat and see what everybody else thought. Maybe that they were 
it was made and just never iridized somehow. And by the way, Lane Booker brought me a present this year. He brought me a, a clear white Thorkin and Russia I've never seen that's not iridized. Okay. Once again, I want to thank everybody who bought the glass for the display. I really enjoyed this. It's kind of special being the 50th anniversary of being able to do this. Uh, I want to thank my wife for helping me. I want to thank my mom. I want to thank the people again who bought the glass. I want to thank Brian for trusting me to do this. Uh, and you guys too. I really enjoy them. I love them. Uh, there's still some I need. Uh, they're getting up there. The ones I don't need are kind of a little more expensive. Peach Opal Fisherman, Blue Fisherman's, but there's not a whole lot left that I need. So thank you for letting me talk about them today, people.